Hey fans, uh, I'm Luke Sikma. This is Peyton Siva. Uh, we're coming to you live, maybe not live, but to bring you the Lotto Berlin Fan Talk. Uh, you guys wrote in some great questions and we're gonna kind of go back and forth asking each other and uh, giving you some answers. So I'm gonna start out asking Peyton. Uh, this question is from Madeline49. She asks, where is the net of the basket you two cut off at the championship in Munich now? Good question. Honestly, I don't really know. I think the guys took it from me after the game. I got to keep a piece of the net with my medal that I won. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of the same. Uh, I made sure I sn uh, snipped off a little piece and have it hanging over my little trophy at home. So I'm keeping that one for a while. Yeah. Next question is from Luke underscore LA. Luke. Luke, 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 this is your first injury since you're here with us. How does it feel to see your team from the seats? And how did you manage not to get injured before? Um, Got any tips for me? Yeah, well, <laughs> first off, it's not my first injury. Uh, I mean, I've been injured, but luckily been able to uh, play some games. But it's my first uh, missed games because of injury. And um, I think the first part was how is it watching from the sidelines? And honestly, it's more nerve wracking than being in the game. Uh, you kind of don't have too much control or effect on the game uh, outside of, you know, just encouraging your teammates. So um, I'm definitely more nervous, but uh, the guys have been playing great, um, playing their hearts out and uh, been, been really proud. And as for tips, um, I mean, don't be exceptionally explosively athletic uh, like Peyton, then you don't really get yourself in that situation, but no, I mean, I think the key is listening to your body and um, taking good care of yourself, get some sleep, um, you know, trying to eat right, but also don't, if you feel like having a pizza one day, go ahead and have a pizza, because um, it's important to treat your body as well as, uh, you know, be careful of. So, great question. All right, this one, next one is from uh, Moritz Kneipe. I think I got that right. Uh, is there a special reason why the alley-oop combo of us two is working so well? I think because Luke is such an athletic, explosive player that I can just throw it anywhere nice. around the rim and he goes up there and gets it. And a lot of years and a lot of practice time uh, that we spent working on it. So kind of have that little connection there that helps out a little bit. Yeah, it's a, uh, what's it? Going on four years now, so <laughs> we've had some practice. Classic, classic. Yeah, classic, classic. <laughs> Next question is from Claudi Berlin with two eyes. What's your favorite place in Berlin? Uh, my bed? No, uh, <laughs> I don't know, there's so many great places. Um, immediately my mind jumps to like food because uh, I love to go try out the new restaurants, so. Um, I mean, there's Panama, uh, there's Cats Orange, uh, Volver, uh, my special breakfast place, Banda Cafe, and that I go to way too often. Um, miss it during lockdown, but uh, looking forward to them uh, opening back up and, and getting back and uh, enjoying that part of life. Um, Peyton, this is from Roven Lassan. Do you watch NFL games of the Seattle Seahawks together as you both come from Seattle? No, we do not watch Seattle Seahawks games together. I tend to watch the late games <laughs> from the Seattle Seahawks. I'm just a huge NFL fan. I play a lot of fantasy football, so I like to keep up with my teams. Luke likes to watch some of the games when he's not asleep. Uh, Correct. And we talk about it the next day. And we now it's playoff time, and hopefully we can go a little further this year than last. Yeah, I'm more of a highlights the day after guy, <laughs> but uh, still a Seahawks fan. Go Hawks. Go Hawks, All baby. right, next question from Tolik, 1809. What are your three favorite words in German? Okay, ooh, this is great. Um, I, th I would say like phrases, uh, alles klar, number one, very universal widely used, easy to say, and similar to what it is in English. Number two is, uh, actually number two is probably number one, but Spurovasa, 
Uh, I know Peyton as well, we're big Sprudelwasser guys, so, and it's also a great word to say. And number three is, um, well, I'll go food again, Kaiserschmann. So it's my favorite German dessert. So, uh, yeah, I like those three. I got one, and it's Off Gets. I guess nine, and those are as far as my, uh, Guten Morgen. Yeah, that's yeah. Fresh. Solid, solid, <laughs> useful. Okay, Pei, um, from Plip Ross. What is it like to have three games a week? It's very tiring to have three games a week. It's fun in the sense that you get to go out there and play. Uh, I enjoy it personally. If we didn't have to travel so much, I think the traveling is the worst part of it. Um, but, you know, from a player's perspective, I enjoy playing the game. I enjoy going out there and competing. It is a little tiring, but I think the travel is what actually gets us. And I think our coach doesn't like it so much because he much rather practice. But as a player, I enjoy just going out there and hooping. Yeah. All right. Next question. Nicholas ZRZ. At what age did you dunk for the first time? Oh man, it was way later than, <laughs> I, probably after Peyton, to be honest. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not the most explosive guy. Uh, and I also wasn't too tall for most of my childhood. So I had a big growth spurt when I was about 14. I think I grew like, what, six inches in a year or something like that. Um, I don't know, it's like 10 centimeters. I, my Same. conversions are terrible. Uh, so uh, I think it was my sophomore year of high school, I finally was consistently dunking in warm-ups, of course, not in an actual game. But uh, so that was 14, 15 years old, something like that. So I've been slowly improving that part of my game. <laughs> Though I think it's kind of, <laughs> might be going on the decline. I like a layup a lot better. Okay, my turn. Uh, this is from Winston Marks. What do you think about your new teammates and how does the team of this season compare to last season? Good question. It's a great question. So some of the new guys, Jason is a great player. I'm glad to see him healthy, great leader. Um, just does everything right for our team. Uh, Sly Low Money, Maldo Low, uh, really great player also. Tough. Tough. Uh, <laughs> You know, he has a, a flair and a kind of swag to his game that's, you know, enjoyable to watch. And I'm glad I don't have to play against him this year. Exactly. Uh, we have Simone Fantecchio, my man from Italy, uh, the Italian stallion, just a strong guy, uh, sneaky athletic, can score anywhere on the court, which is uh, fun to watch. Then we have Ben, the laminator, Lammers, who surprised me a lot this year just from his jump shot and um, the way he's able to get off the ground quick and block shots. And just how loud and outgoing and like socially <laughs> active he is too is, uh, was, you know, great surprise. And then we have, um, I'm forgetting. Lou. Lou. I don't like him. Okay. Um, Louis Olindi. Louis. <laughs> nah, he's a very charismatic guy. You know, he's, he brings a lot of energy to the team. Uh, great player. You know, he's, he's learning a lot under Aito's system and, um, you know, he's shooting the ball well. He's doing every little thing that we need for him. And, you know, he's a fun guy to play along with. So, as far as everybody from how this team compares to the last couple of years. Are we, met, are we missing someone? Or we have right That's everybody. Okay. Yeah. Malte, and young guy. No, no, he's been around longer yeah. than I have. Yeah, same. Um, but I would say from this year to the last couple of years, uh, teams is is just new guys. You try to get adjusted to them. Um, it's tougher this year with uh, COVID and everything. You don't really get to spend as much time off the court with these guys as we've had in the past. And uh, so I would think just the chemistry wise of spending off the court is a little different, but. With all these road trips and travel, we get to make that time up and uh, spend time to get to know these guys better. And uh, as you can see, our chemistry and those guys learning the system is getting better day by day by day. And you can see it in the game, guys getting more confident, um, learning the system and yeah. All right, my turn. 
Any guys that you want to say? Anything you want to say about the new guys? No, you pretty much hit it on the head. I mean, uh, most importantly, they're all really good guys. Uh, I think our locker room is really strong this year. Um, great chemistry, and I think that's showing on the court. That's it. All right, next question from Vicky Bach. What is your preferred vacation destination where you have never been before and what you'd like to visit one day? Okay, so three-part question, right? So favorite vacation destination, I um, have to say Hawaii, Maui to be specific. I'm a big beach guy. Um, went there a lot, you know, as a family uh, growing up. So have some good memories, great food, love the vibe, but um, vibes. Yeah, that's, yeah, vibes. That's gotta be number one. Um, the second one is where do I wanna go that I've never been? I think top of the list is Japan. Uh, I know mostly for the food. Um, you're, I'm sure you're noticing a trend. Everything kind of falls towards food with me, but uh, actually played my teammate in college was Japanese. He told me a lot of great things. Um, would love to go uh, check out you know the country. Heard amazing things. Heard it's beautiful and um, love to do a little culinary adventure there. And then number three was. No, it was just two parts. Oh, it was just two parts? Uh, never mind. That's it. <laughs> okay, uh, next question comes from TD0175. Uh, which was your Alba home game with the best atmosphere so far, and how do you miss the fans in general? I think the Alba game with the best atmosphere would have had to be either the Valencia game during the cup finals where we had the home game, or the Oldenburg game when we won the, the cup. Uh, cup. Yeah, the cup, the Oldenburg game for me. For yeah, sure. and I think just that, just the excitement from the crowd, the actually getting a chance to win like a you know championship in front of our home fans was pretty amazing. Uh, they showed a lot of love, a lot of support, and uh, it was just a great feeling overall. And you know we missed them a lot. Uh, we missed the excitement. We missed the oh, 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 oh. Uh, banging on the drums. Yeah. yeah, I miss banging on the drums with them after the games. Uh, but you know, we miss the fans a lot. We miss you guys, and can't wait to have you guys back in the the hall with us. Yeah, amen. So yours was the Oldenburg game too. Yeah, it'd have to be a cup. And I think how uh, literally had to change the whole arena just so we could play that game after the Ice Baron game. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> You know, I think the energy was incredible, and uh, to be able to finally celebrate that cup with them was, was awesome. All right. Tanja, Rick, Luke, what's golf like without Martin? And what do you think of yours truly, Peyton's golf skills? Okay, another two-parter. So uh, my golf game without Martin, um, I think it's actually getting a little worse, probably because we're not playing as much, um, but uh, it always brought out a little competitive edge with me. Uh, we like to compete against each other, but um, I know his is doing okay. He's got that sunny weather in Valencia, <laughs> so he's playing plenty. Um, and as for Peyton's golf game, it's, uh, I mean, he doesn't play a lot, but uh, I know he invested in some golf clubs, so. Yep. Um, Can't I go think, anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, eventually, but he's, um, I mean, a great swing. Uh, I got a birdie. Got a birdie. Um, we were playing mini golf, but still is a birdie. <laughs> um, no, but uh, you know, it's something that I'm sure he's gonna really improve at. Okay, this is from Kölner in Berlin, underscore, underscore. Peyton, would you let Luke look after your kids so that you can have a relaxed evening with your wife? Yeah, of course. Uh, my kids love Uncle Luke. You know, he gives, he plays the high five game with them. Um, Tough high five game. Yeah, yeah. they uh, really enjoy that. But Luke's a dependable guy. I, I, I trust him with my kids. Yeah. That means a lot. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm available for babysitting. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I, did, I did do some babysitting when I was growing up, so I'm pretty good with kids. Martin Pesterski. How important is friendship for a professional basketball player, and does this kind of friendship depend on the success of a team? That's a great question. Um, I think 
And I know I can speak of you know playing with Alba for this many years and have played on teams that are really close in the past, but having uh, guys who you can consider friends on your team, um, I think first off, it's great just to be able to work with people that you enjoy you know, spending time with and uh, that care about each other. And I think that you know, definitely translates to the court. Uh, I think, like I said, we've had always a close locker room here. And uh, I think that's a huge part of you know, what gives us you know, extra edge. And you can see how we play and read off each other on the court. So uh, it doesn't happen everywhere. But uh, I'm very fortunate, very lucky that you know, that happens here uh, with this team. And, um, you know, I think these are friendships that we'll have for a lot of years to come, so uh, I feel very fortunate and uh, I'm sure Peyton can probably speak on it as well, but, uh, you know, it's not super common in professional sports, but um, lucky that, it, like, that we got it here. Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, having the chemistry that we have on and off the court plays a big role. Uh, I think guys that we have have played with in years past since being here, that you kind of build this bond and this brotherhood that uh, is much bigger than on the court that you can kind of, you know, take with you for the rest of the life. And it's, I think it's very important to kind of build those bonds to, you know, just enjoy playing with each other on the court, enjoy seeing each other at work every day. And that's something that, you know, has been really big for myself here at Alba, uh, just enjoying the chemistry, enjoying actually coming to, you know, be around these guys every day. It's not a miserable task. So I think that's very important in professional sports because it's not like that everywhere. So, huge. Okay, uh, last question. This is from Le 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 Leina. Leleina. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> how did you celebrate Christmas this season? Oh, I can tell you how I celebrated Christmas. Uh, my Christmas consisted of me waking up, uh, playing PS4, and I nice. uh, was playing a little bit of Call of Duty, playing a little bit of uh, Ghost of, was it, Tsushima. Waited for my kids to wake up, because they were back in the States. Uh, if you ever seen the Modern Family episode with Phil, I was the iPad robot that just sat in the corner of the house watched the kids open presents and I just had my iPad set up while I just stared at them the whole time. There was some moments during the day where the iPad was flipped up and I was just staring, staring at a screen. But uh, yeah, fun, fun Christmas. And uh, Luke also invited us over for a dinner with uh, the guys who were by themselves, which was me and Kresh. And he cooked, which was an amazing meal. We hung out, chilled, played a little game and it was, it was great, great times. Yeah, we got to, I mean, I think everyone's kind of in the same boat. It's a little different Christmas for everybody this year, but we were able to celebrate, you know, a little bit, but um, you know, pretty relaxed. Pretty chill. All right, last one from me to you. Ulrich Liero, Liero, do you have any recommendations, good books, Netflix series, or otherwise, to pass the time between games during lockdown? Oof. Um, okay, I think step one is a Call of Duty Warzone. It's been huge for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was never a huge video game guy, but uh, had a lot of fun playing that. Um, Netflix, I told Peyton about Ted Lasso. It's on Apple Plus with Jason Stakis. Just finished it. Yeah, great, great, great series. Show. Uh, apropos for a couple Americans living in Europe in sports. Uh, uh, highly suggest it. Um, books. I've been reading a lot. Um, I'm a big fan of Don Winslow, who's an author, uh, American author. Um, so finishing one, the last book of one of his series, uh, it's called The Border. Um, also, I read a great book called Live Wiring. It's about the function of the human brain and um, kind of just not to sound like a nerd, but how amazing of a, you know, kind of thing it is and how it's kind of like a supercomputer and adjusts everything. So if you want something a little, a little nerdier, but uh, really interesting, I recommend that. And um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. I mean, I think everyone could go on forever, but maybe Peyton's got a couple more. Uh, as far as books, I've just been reading like rental properties, uh, learning about nice. real estate. Um, during lockdown, um, I just got Ready Player One. I enjoyed the movie a lot, and everybody told me how much the book is better. So, planning on reading that through. 
As far as shows, uh, I just finished Ted Lasso. I binge watched it. It was an amazing show. It's funny. Um, I've been on Twitch watching uh, Nick Merckx yep. or Tim Tapman or my friends from back home who like to stream mm -hmm. just to support them. And uh, yeah, now that my kids are back, uh, Frozen, for anything. <laughs> Frozen, uh, Soul, a good movie on Disney Plus and uh, cartoons all day, so yeah. Nice, well uh, that about wraps it up. Uh, we really appreciate your questions and more than anything, we really miss you guys. Um, hope to see you again here soon. Uh, hope everyone's staying safe and uh, hoping for a, a better 2021. So um, again, we miss you all and, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Go Alba. Go Alba.